Design systems are incredibly popular right now. They're becoming a must have skill for product designers. Large agencies and also large businesses are looking for product designers who understand design systems to fit the need of grading them. With the job market being competitive, it's important to stay up to date with these latest kind of skills. In this video, I'm gonna explain what design systems are, the benefits of using them, the thinking of behind of why you would use a design system, break down a little bit what design systems actually are so you can understand them. And at the end, I'll go through some design systems and just show some good examples to start with. So by the end of this video, you'll have a solid understanding of what design systems are. Even if you're a beginner, this is a great place to start. Then in a future video, I'll take you through a step-by-step -step process of actually how you could create them. So let's start at the total basis. What actually are design systems? If you have a Google and you kind of just look up a definition of them, it says, a design system is a collection of reusable components guided by clear standards that can be assembled together to build any number of applications. So that's a bit wordy. So let's actually break that down practically of what that might actually look like. So let's take this website, for example, and let's just look at this one section here. And then if we zoom in a little bit closer on this section of cards and we just take one individual card, this is called a component. And that's a great place of understanding what design systems are. And it's a word you'll hear a lot is components. So if we look at this card component, there is things that are making this card component look and feel the way it is. So design tokens are the smallest part of it. So if you take things like color or type or spacing and these small variables of if you get them consistent on that stage, as things scale out further, they're always looking back to the design tokens as the starting point and things can scale efficiently and also be consistent. But if you take this card apart now and you know that you've designed it once, you have this as a component. So instead of having to think of how am I gonna build this card next time, you already have this component that lives somewhere that is already branded and tested and has documentation about it. You can just put that in straight away and save yourself time. So we just talked through a couple of things like components and documentation about it. So I'm just gonna break down some of the parts of a design system and kind of explain how an ecosystem of them can fit together. There isn't a one size fits all for design system. It's dependent on what you're building or how your business is structured or what's more important to you. But this is just a basis of understanding it. So a great place to start is a component library. This is what a lot of people think of when they think of a design system is just the component library. So this is a group of reusable elements that we just talked about that these days it's normally hosted in somewhere like Figma. You'll have each component broken up. So if you were look at some examples here, we have some cards, some buttons, some radio buttons, an accordion, a progress bar. All these things can be components. The reason you have this is that you can build and scale designs very fast if you have all these pre-built components already. On the other side, we have something like a pattern library. Pattern library and component library kind of sometimes get used interchangeably, but what I mean in this one is component library is where designers will have things in Figma, where a pattern library might be hosted in something like a, a GitHub and using something like Storybook or Zero Height to have coded develop components. How I was saying that designers can build really quick with a Figma component library. The same thing is said if they have the develop components as well. When a developer needs to make a new part of the website quickly, they already have these develop components that they can turn to to use. Another part that can fit into the ecosystem of a design system is a style guide that shows the branding and looks at it from that side as all these things are connected. This is a big one that sometimes gets overlooked, but documentation in a design system is very important. Documentation can come in many different styles, but if you look online, you'll see some different examples. Some way to think about documentation is you might have things in there of the how and why you actually will use a component. So if you have a complex flow or some sort of challenge that you're not sure which component you can use, you could have documentation explaining how they fixed that problem in the past and they've used this component to fix that. As your design system gets more mature as well, you could introduce things into the documentation of if you've tested components and you've actually found some work better with users than others, you could have in the documentation that when we've used this in the past, we've actually found that users rather use a drop down for selecting things in this form instead of a group of radio buttons. And lastly, you need some sort of design team to actually manage all this as this can very easily become a full-time job if you're a very large organization. So you're probably starting to think now of why actually would you use a design system? Especially as a designer, you probably think, oh, I just designed the website. You know, I have a five to 10 page website. I'll just design each individual page for it. And isn't that what I'm paid to do? And that's great if you're designing only a five to 10 page website or even slightly bigger. But you might get to the point that you're working for an organization or a big enterprise client that has multiple websites with hundreds of pages as well as multiple apps as well. And also you'll run into the issue of all these different products and properties might actually have different teams working for them with the interconnected world we work for as well. 
maybe these different teams actually work on different continents at different times as well. And you want to have some sort of consistency within your organization for all these different products. So let's take, for example, if you have two design teams, one's that working on the website and one that is working for the app and they're both working for the same company. Design team A goes with the style of making everything square and very clean cut. And then design team B, who's working on the app, puts everything round and starts putting drop shadows on everything. And both of them are great and they're just stylistic choices. But when the user goes from the website and then downloads the app, they're gonna start having a very different experience because it's inconsistent and also, and you've wasted time designing things twice when they both say solve the problem. With a design system, you'd have a single source of truth that both teams, even if they're not actually connected, could look at it and know, actually, this is stylistically how we're meant to be designing things because we have a component library or a pattern library that we can rely on. Let's talk about some of the benefits of why you would use a design system. This is great to understand if a client comes to you and they've heard about it and they don't really understand, this can help you sell it to them of how it might help their business. First off, we've got visual consistency. As we are just talking before, everything can feel on brand. If you have a team of multiple designers, you know that whatever they're designing these new pages with or whatever they're working on is actually all gonna feel on brand and still be consistent. It's much more quicker and efficient. The world of products and ideas is really fast these days. So the expectation for designers to be able to take an idea that someone has and launch the product needs to be very fast. A design system really helps with creating these products faster, whatever it might be and also keeping things within budget and getting things done at the right timeline. As we were saying before, if you have all these components saved and you need to spin up a new landing page, you could easily get the designer to pull a hero section, set a card, ETA, pull a testimonial, footer all into it, and then send that to the developer who would have the coded version of all those and be able to code that page up and launch it incredibly fast. It's much more efficient as well of you build something once and then you can use it every time. If you look at this stat, you'll see how much money can actually be saved by implementing and using a design system. They're great when you're scaling, as maybe you have one website and one team, and then as the business scales, and you then launch a second website that maybe has a different team that you need to bring on, they can both pull from the, de the same design system as they start scaling things out. This is a big one, but it actually saves a lot of time and it empowers designers to focus on more important problems. So instead of things like recreating an input field all the time and having the debate of what it should look like, if you've created it once, you can actually focus on bigger things of how is the user actually using the input field? Or if you have this complex flow that you're dropping 80% of users on because they're having a really bad user experience, instead of wasting time on the small things, you can be spending time on actually looking at the user journey and improving the product on a whole. It helps as it creates a unified language as well. So it's much easier for people internally to be able to talk about. There is no confusion when the designer is talking to the developer and saying that on this dashboard, we're actually gonna have a series of tile components on it. There's no confusion of the developer thinking, oh, is this some sort of button or is this a link? What's, what actually is it? But they know that it's a tile component that everyone's used before and they've built before. So it saves a lot of time. Let's look at some good examples that can help you get started with understanding design systems. Carbon by IBM is an absolutely massive design system. It has so many different states of things. It's a great example of going through everything very thoughtfully from default to disabled to focus to pressed all the different states together and laying them all out. The Figma is very comprehensive and it's actually free to make a copy of on Figma and actually look through all the different components and get an idea of how some of the top of the line organizations that would have entire teams working on this build out a design system. Google Material is a great one that you can look up online and they have a really good explanation behind components explaining why you would actually use things and the thought process of creating new pages and products. And this is a good example of taking things just further than a component library, but actually putting the UI and the UX together and making them both feel important. You can also look up the Alassian design system they have a heap of good resources about design systems. They have great explanations. Once you want to dig a little bit further into tokens and atoms, they have heaps of content explaining those things. Figma is a great tool to build design systems in. I have a heap of other videos on that. If you have any questions about them, if you're new to them or you're more experienced, but you have questions that you want to talk about, put them below and I'll include them in future videos or make whole videos explaining them.